This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Midnight tonight from the East Coast to the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, here he is. The famous, the well known, the star that is Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> Those are all words that don't describe me at all. They don't describe you at all. Oh well. How you doing, Larry? Good, good. I uh I know you just had a surgery battle, so I was Anxious to hear about that. Well, it was a surgery. It wasn't a battle, you know. Well, anytime you go into the knife, it's a battle. You, you can't see me, but finally my eyes are pretty well clearing up. I, I have a little black and blue under one of my eyes. The other one seems to be kind of uh, not as swollen. And the ba- the um, uh, the eye lift, somebody said, makes me look younger. Oh, which means I must have looked older. <laughs> you know. So this was uh, painful? Well, it shouldn't be, right? Right? But And I've told the story a dozen times on the show, but I'll tell it once again. They gave me light sedation because he wanted me awake so that he, I could move my eyes for him, like up and down, up and down, up and down, Right? So he gave me light sedation. So that means that when he stuck the Novocaine into the eyelids, I could feel it. Mm. Oh, wow. You know, so why are you even sedating me? You know, so uh, that that it was. And then he said to me, well, you know, he says, we may have to go back in and do one of the eyes again because I didn't get it just like I wanted it because you were fidgety. I, I, I'm <laughs> thinking to myself... You're giving me no, really no sedation to speak of, and you expect me not to be a little edgy? Yeah, God. So, you know, put me out completely, I'm, then I will be yours, okay? So don't blame me because you didn't give me enough juice. Yeah, yeah it doesn't, that's not a good uh, answer from a doctor. He's well, like here, was blaming the, you. Here, here was the best thing from the doctor. <laughs> I, that I that I got okay. This is the best one. During the I, I, operation, I said, I said uh, how, "How's it going?" Because I'm, you know, it's not not pleasant. He goes, "Shut up! I'm trying to work." Wow, <laughs> <laughs> a great bedside manner. But he's a good doctor. He did a great job on me. I mean, you know, I mean, I look at it and I'm going, "Gee, I can't even see where he did anything now." You know. But I have to keep putting salve on it and do things like that. So, yeah, it's, it's still that way. But Well, it, that sounds like a very sensitive area to have anything done. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. But um, you, you know who this guy is? I shouldn't be saying this really. Well, it doesn't matter he, his, who his brother-in-law is. Stephen Mnuchin. Do you know oh, that, God. You know that name? The fina- finance guy. Guy. Yeah, yeah. He he was uh, the uh, Trump's um, um, what do you call it? Money guy. What? what right. Yeah. Yeah. The Secretary of Finance. That was it. Okay. And you know what he did before that? He produced the Wonder Woman movie. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. How you went from producing movies in Hollywood to being you know. The Secretary of Finance, and he he must have kissed Trump's ass a lot, okay, because he was there for almost the whole time, and most people weren't with Trump. You know, he was firing him every other week. So, you know, that's that's that. So, uh, but how how's your health? How how's your uh, well being? Well, speaking of, I just had uh, yesterday, I got my eyeball measured for the cataract surgery, so I'm getting closer. 
They measured your eyeball? You look in something and they, I don't know, they, they, I don't know what they're looking at, but they said they're measuring things. So with the cataract surgery, do you have a little part of your eye that's kind of fuzzy, like in the yeah. center? Yeah, that's, that's what it is. They just, they just cut out the old lens and put in a new one. And by the way, you don't feel a thing. And it's simple. It's a sim- it used to be a very complicated process, but now it's, you know, it's cool. By the way, I thought folks, I heard she's 15 minutes, maybe. Yeah. By the way, folks, welcome to our program here. We're always talking about how's your health. <laughs> you know, you remember when you were, you remember when we were younger, what was the topic of conversation? So did you get Usually laid? women or drugs. <laughs> did you get laid recently? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> I haven't gotten laid in a week, you know, that kind of discussion. And as you get older and older, dinner conversation becomes, so what kind of insurance do you have? <laughs> insurance. You know, oh, you're having cataract surgery. I see. Okay. You know. But uh, uh, it's just, it's, you know, that's what happens when you get older, folks. I, I, I'm sorry. You're listening to an older guy talking to another older guy, not as old as I am, but older. You're a, yes, nature's slow assault on your body. Yeah, you're what now? Sixty six, is it? Sixty eight. Sixty eight. Okay, so you're getting yeah. you're getting social security. Yeah. Oh, I took I took that early. Yeah, you took that Why early. Not, yeah. What when you were sixty two? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I did it too. I needed it so. I didn't figure I'd live this long to grab it, get it while you can. Yeah, yeah. So you, you know, so we should just do a show where we only allow people on who are on Social Security. You know, <laughs> that, that, that's what I should do. The Weezers. Yeah, I mean, I know that to young, I, they, I don't think there's a younger person that listens to this show. I, it seems almost incredible to me that any younger person would. Why? What's the subject matter here <laughs> that seems to... We've, we've got bad demographics. It, it seems to appeal to you. you know? <laughs> so you've been working at all? I mean, the things uh, are lightening up in California a little bit. So A couple of gigs here and there. I got three at the end of the month, so we'll see how those go. I'm so rusty, I'm uh, afraid to get on stage, but... That, you know, people don't understand that about comedians. They go, oh, well, they just got there and they do the jokes. Oh, well, they, there's COVID, so they weren't able to work for a while, but then all of a sudden you get to go back on stage and you just do it. Sometimes you can't remember half your act. No, no, and I, I thought I was the only one. I, I, it's pretty common. So, Yeah, I mean, p- p- uh, folks, it's one of those kind of things that if you don't use it, you lose it. Mm-hmm. Someone said that Richard Pryor, after that fire incident, it took him a year to get back to normal on stage. Yeah. Well, of course, he also had a tragic kind of situation. You were just stuck indoors because yeah. of COVID. We were pretty much in prison. He was on fire. Well, so. You must be happy because out in California, the, uh, the, uh, the COVID rate, uh, the uh, rate of infection is the lowest in the country. It is, yeah. It seems like it's dissipating everywhere, though, isn't it? Yes, but we have winter coming on. So we don't know. You know, I mean, when they say it's dissipated, it's dissipated among the people who've had the the, uh, vaccination. But among the unvaccinated, it's still a problem. Mm -hmm. You know? And I, uh, uh, you know, of course, I've got, got my third shot. Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, I got my third shot. I'm glowing in the dark now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I'm not even supposed to get it because I took Moderna. But up at my right aid, they said, ah, we give the third shot for Moderna, too. Hell with it. You know? So we're all we're all zippity doo ready to go, you know? So, um, and uh, We'll live to be 100. Yeah, right. At this rate, I'm lucky I'm going to live till next week, okay? <laughs> you know, here we go, folks. More old people stuff. So I take this drug, okay? It's called uh, pregabalin. It's a, a Jerry Lewis drug. Uh, pregabalin. And it um, it's a neuropathy drug. 
And what it does is it like deadens some thump, something, I don't know. But it helps with my neuropathy in my feet. Um, and uh, see, I'm old enough to have neuropathy, folks. I'm old enough to have neuropathy. So uh, I take this drug, but the trouble with it is, is it makes me bump into walls the next day. And also I forget stuff. Like I have stuff here that I do on the computer that I just do as a matter of rote. Like here I'm doing you and I have to start the recorder and so on. And when, I'm, when I've got this drug in me, I start forgetting how to do all that. You know, I have to think for a second. How do I do that again? Where, where is that? You know, so I, I, I'd I like to stop taking that drug. So I haven't taken it for a couple of days. And I felt like crap yesterday. So last night when I went to sleep, I took a, um, uh, a Xanax, which then put me to sleep. And today I'm a little groggy, but I don't feel weird from that not using that drug. But if I don't use the drug, my feet hurt. If I use the drug, uh, my feet don't hurt as much. And and so, but then it also makes me wonky and, and I can't remember stuff and things like that. So what's the payoff here? You know, what's the trade-off? I mean, you know, there are no drugs that are really good for you. No, they always, there's always a side effect. You know what my friend Shecky said he did? He was up to about, I don't know, five pills or something a day. One day he just said, fuck it, and he stopped taking them. Oh, okay. good. Just I stop. know people, some people take uh, 20 a day. Yeah, but he doesn't take them. He just doesn't take them anymore, and he said he feels better, you know. But he goes to his doctor, and they go, oh, your cholesterol's a little high. Well, fuck you, you know. <laughs> That's the way I feel. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know that I'm... I don't know that taking all these pills, and I have about... I take uh, I take about 10 pills, if you include vitamins, okay, every day, all right? And I don't know if I didn't stop them tomorrow, so my cholesterol goes up. So what? I don't care, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, you don't... Uh... You don't have a history of heart attack in your family, so I wouldn't worry about it. No, I had my father had an angina. <laughs> a cute? <laughs> a very cute angina. <laughs> no, he had angina, but that's not deadly. You know? So what the hell? You know, I just I I just want to I maybe I should just stop taking all those drugs and be happy. I think Shecky's on to something. I mean, I'll go to the doctor and he'll go, boy, your cholesterol's off the charts. Good. I don't care. It's probably those steaks I've been eating, you know? I mean, how much do we have to watch out for ourselves until life becomes completely boring? Yeah, exactly. Like, for instance, what's bad for you that you, don't, you wouldn't give up? Something you ingest or whatever. Uh, Diet Coke. Diet Coke isn't that bad for you. It's better than regular Coke with all the sugar. Uh, well, the chemicals and you know what I you know what you know what I've started doing. I stopped doing. I used to do suck Diet Coke down like it was there was no tomorrow, right? And uh, then I started Snapple and mixing it with the Diet Coke. But then I discovered at Costco they have this sparkling seltzer, you know, sparkling water in flavors. And I take that. And it's like drinking water. You know, and it's very quite good for you. So I'm that's Yeah, all, I should try that. That's but, all I uh, drink exclusively, you know. So do you do you go to Costco, by the way? Are you oh. Uh you have to have don't you have to be a member? So, so. Yeah. I'm I'm not buying things in bulk, so I don't. Well, don't you? Well, yeah, but there's certain things you can buy in bulk that you will never, if you ever, you will run out of them. And, and that's like toilet paper, paper towels. Um, those are things that you eventually will get through. I don't care if you went out 
and you bought 10,000 rolls of toilet paper, eventually one day you go to the closet and go, we're all out of toilet <laughs> paper, you know? And they're starting to have shortages of that again. Yes, yes, there's shortages of that. There's shortages of everything because uh, all those uh, container ships are being stacked up uh, outside the outside the bay, I guess, in your case. Yeah, yeah but what, so what's the reason for this? I can't get a good answer. Uh, I, 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 there isn't really a good answer. I think part of the problem is trucks. There aren't enough truck drivers to unload the stuff. I don't know if any of that makes sense to you. But we can talk well, about this next time, actually. Yeah, yeah. The next time we talk to Larry Bubbles Brown. Thank you, Larry. Thanks, Alex. Okay, bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yeah, that's Bubs, and uh, Bubs will be with us again next week, uh, again, you know. And uh, we're here uh, for our third night in a row. Isn't that amazing? We actually did three nights in a row. Uh, folks uh, and uh, I'm happy about that I'm uh, d delighted about that uh, but uh, next week I think I'm going to do three nights too I'm going to do uh, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday uh, the reason I'm doing that is I've been a little bit on the tired side and I'm still trying to kind of get it together I think what happened was having uh, this operation really took more out of me than I thought you know I thought, oh, you know, it's a short operation. I'll come in, I'll leave, and that, that'll be it, and we'll be fine. And uh, no, and uh, so I'm still kind of tired. So I think we're probably, I mean, I'll let you know on the Facebook page if we're going to do a show on Tuesday. But also, people, for some reason, have not been calling as much as they were, and not as many people are listening, uh, because uh, Alex had the audacity to take some time off because he was having his eyes worked on and he was sick and one thing and another. But here I am. I'm back with you once again, folks. Well, there are a bunch of people waiting to come on right now, so I'm going to admit them all. And uh, let me see here. Hey, guess who's here again tonight? This is wonderful. This is, uh, this is, uh, this is worth it all. Terry is with us, ladies and gentlemen. She's still, and she is connected to her audio. She's done it all, ladies and gentlemen. Let me hey. admit Vernon Nunn here. He's coming on. And uh, hello, Josh Wheeler. How are you? And Good. Uh, how are you? And what is the T-shirt today that Charlie is wearing? That's a horrible idea. What time? <laughs> Where did you get that? Where do you find these things? <laughs> I'm a t-shirt whatever I, I find t-shirts everywhere a t-shirt aficionado yeah 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 it's great and hello Vernon Nunn uh, wh where are you you still in Arkansas Virginia <laughs> Virginia <laughs> wherever it was that year you're, you're just down there in in good old hick country aren't you Oh, it's definitely Trump country. Yeah, I, well, uh, t check in here with Terry. She lives in Wyoming. You want to yeah. know Trump country? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think uh, back in 2016 when we were coming here, there's a the last leg of the travel is about nine or ten miles after you get off the interstate. Yeah, and I think during during that time we saw nothing but Trump signs in people's yards oh. in 2020 we saw one non-trump sign one non-trump sign yeah wow wow now uh let me ask both of you well I'll, I'll ask terry first but in wyoming if you if when the whole presidential election was going on did you have a biden bumper sticker or did you not do that no you, why? Because they would have keyed your car, right? Yeah, I just, yeah. No, it, I, I don't Not a good you. idea. <laughs> Isn't that terrible, though, that we have to say in a yeah. country where we believe this is the home of the brave and home of the free and whatever it is supposed to be, and, and you can't put a bumper sticker on your car without fear? This was a very democratic um, county mm -hmm. up until recently. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, and I've no, I know 
people who sit in elected positions that have had to change party mm -hmm. affiliation. Oh, really? Because these people vote tickets, you know, or just straight Republican or what have you. Wow. Wow. The most Democratic uh, counties are Teton County, yeah. where billionaires have kicked out the millionaires, and then, um, well, over in Laramie, where the University of Wyoming is, that's pretty Democratic too. Wow. Yeah, I think yeah. in I think in Teton too, you have a lot of transplanted <laughs> people that work for like the Park Service and uh, Fish and Wildlife. I mean, there's a lot of government people that live in Teton County that necessarily are not from. Probably most of them are not from Wyoming. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty yeah. sure. I spent a lot of time, sure out. I spent a lot of time out there, and I, I know that's that's kind of what I've seen. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then you get a lot of celebrities and what have you that have second homes. Oh, yeah. But right, they, right. Uh, in Jackson. Yeah, yeah, visit, sure. yeah, yeah. It's also um, mm -hmm. because we have a summer place or little lot um, about 50 miles south of Jackson. We got their newspaper. And it's the only place I'm aware of where the governor will go stand on the street corner and talk to people. Oh, really? None of these politicians come to uh, Sweetwater <laughs> County where I live or other communities and what have you. Yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, now, is he a Republican or Democrat? Oh, <laughs> Republican. Oh, so he could walk out on the street and talk to these people and they love him. Well, right? he, he, I mean, he goes and he stands on street corners up in Jackson where these those politicians never do that in other communities that I'm aware of. Right, right. Certainly not the one I live in. Yeah. So, uh, what what is I uh, do you know what the uh, makeup is of the population of Wyoming when it comes to right and left? I think it was like maybe 22 percent uh, voted Democratic and the rest was Republican or Libertarian. Libertarian. Oh, I hate libertarians. Yeah. I looked at oh, their electoral. Oh, the biggest friggin' hypocrites on the planet. What the libertarians? Earth. Oh God, yes. Yeah well, yeah, well, they they don't know what they want to be. That's the problem, you know. It's almost well, it's almost like being Swiss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so well, I feel I feel fortunate living in one of two Democratic strongholds in the red state of Kentucky because wow. Jefferson County and Fayette County are heavily Democratic. They, you, they go like 60% Democrats during most elections. Now, I remember when I was coming back from Florida, which was a horrendous experience, which I would tell you about, but I don't want to relive. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 we came through Kentucky, and I was just amazed how beautiful Kentucky is. It is it's gorgeous. Am I right or wrong? Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, and a lot of horse farms. Passed a lot of horse farms, and I think the grass actually looked blue. <laughs> yeah. Kentucky bluegrass. Yeah, it's <laughs> actually a species of grass called bluegrass. Yeah, and is it is it blue in color? Or is it just the way it hits the kind sky? of a greenish blue? Yeah. Really? Wow, wow. Okay, well, uh, we'll have to find out exactly where you're living, and that's where we're, where where we'll move to. You know, but <laughs> anyway. And Ryan Paul's your one of your senators. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Tell, oh, yeah. tell them who oh, the yeah. other one is. And the other one. Oh, is the other one is Mitch McConnell. McConnell. Isn't that yeah. a, isn't that a wonderful place to be? Or as as we call him, Mitch McChinless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? I I, I keep asking. I'm trying to understand why people buy that bullshit. Yeah. Well, they, well, they 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 buy that bullshit because it's uh, it's bullshit they buy. You know. I mean. <laughs> It's 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 amazing to me that a guy like Rand Paul can even get elected by even a halfway intelligent person, you know. Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz. He, he came in. He came in on the Tea Party. He he was first elected so when the Tea Party came in. Yeah. So yeah, Barrasso. Yeah, and and uh, uh, although he was appointed. Originally. Now Cruz came in on the Tea Party, didn't he? Uh, yeah, I came in, yeah, uh, 2012, yeah. And isn't it terrible now? Well, it isn't terrible, but isn't it a shame to say he got elected because he was part of the Tea Party, and now the Tea Party really virtually doesn't exist, does it? Right. You never hear about him anymore. It, it, was a, it lasted for about a minute and a half, and that was it. 
you know. Well, well you know but what that's that for, that right? Oh, Brothers creation, the Tea Party. Yeah. I mean, from what I've read. But you I know, think. The, the Koch brothers, in their final sense of a moment of wisdom, did not support Trump. You know, they, they that was not going overtly, too that was going too I far think for their them. organizations funneled money to them. No, it, supposedly he wanted money from them, and they wouldn't do it. They didn't like. They wouldn't him. do it. They didn't like no. him. Am I right, uh, Vernon? You're kind of aware of this, aren't you? Yeah, they've they've kind of dropped off of uh, the political scene, uh, uh, concentrating more on getting people that uh, think more libertarian into universities. Uh, yeah. They donate a lot of money to a University of Florida, but then they said anybody that you hire in your economics department, we've got to approve them. Well, one of the two libertarian brothers died, right? Oh, yeah, died. yeah, Dave David Koch died. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I mean, um, uh, they controlled a lot in this country for a while. I mean, it was amazing how they did, you know. Oh, I, th I think their dark money packs and what have you control a lot of things in this country. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, uh, but we've got a lot of we've got a lot of left wing money, too. There's a lot yeah. of hot left wing money. You got, But that's good you know. money. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know. They're spending it uh, wisely. You hope. What you're saying is they're spending it wisely. Um, uh, uh, who was the uh, who, who's the who's the right wing big money guy uh, who I believe had something to do with me getting fired over at Sirius XM? Uh, oh. Come on, what's his name? Josh, you know, the big money guy, the left wing big money guy. Rush Limbaugh. No. He, oh, left. <laughs> left wing. Uh, what? Left wing or right wing? You said right left wing. wing left time. wing. Left wing. Soros. Are you talking Soros. about uh, yeah. Soros? Yeah. Soros. Yeah. George Soros. Yeah. 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 I think he had something to do with me getting left, let go at Sirius X. How uh, so? Uh, because I didn't like Media Matters. Uh, I didn't like them as an organization, and he was a big contributor to Media Matters. Yeah. And when I got fired, who did they put in my place? The guy who was one of the guys who ran Media Matters. Uh, See, yeah, yeah. They just wanted to get rid of you. Well, I'm I'm difficult to have around, you know. And they changed what the channel. It used to be Serious Left, and they started calling it Serious Progress. Yeah, and I always hated that term, progressive. Um, it's kind. I remember of, the day you didn't show up because I I went on satellite radio just to have something that was liberal. Yeah, yeah. I think I was a little too, I was a little too liberal for them in that my stance on things was a little bit, uh, it didn't go along, I, I, I was critical, for instance, of Obama. Yeah. I, I wasn't against Obama, but I was critical of him. I didn't think that everything he was doing was terrific. And those were in the days where if you were going to be the right left-wing radio station, you've got to go rah, rah, rah for, for Obama. And mm. come on, the kid was a, he was basically a, a punk kid who came in without any real experience and learned that it was on the job training. Yeah. And so he had every right to be criticized and questioned as to what he was doing and so on. But I think that got Soros's mm. butt button in uproar. But uh, mm. anyway. I'll never know why I'm not there anymore. I have no idea, you know. Never paying you too much? That had a little to do with it, just a little. And it wasn't a lot of money. I mean, you know. Uh, but it was uh, uh, it was a little bit of money. and uh, But it was more than a lot of people who had the same job I had. And then we had Albert. And Albert was the highest paid producer, I think, outside of Howard's producer in the whole building. So, so you know that that you know that's and right. deservedly so. And, and yes, because we did a damn fine job of it. Right? Yeah. You know, right? <laughs> well, you know, I just didn't like doing. I I didn't like doing uh, talk shows that were kind of sp spreading a company line. Like I can't stand MSNBC. Me either. Because every time I tune them in, it's just they, they, they have no, uh, they're just trying to be so perfectly progressive, okay, uh, that uh, they, they, they don't ask the, the hard questions of people.
you know, and they really should. Do any of them do, though? MSNBC is not progressive. Well, they consider themselves to be to the to the left. Well, Nancy okay. Pelosi considers herself progressive, but she's not. Yeah, well, a lot of people. Progressive, what does that term mean exactly? You know? When I think progressive, I think Bernie Sanders. No, I think socialist. AOC. OAC. Yeah. OAC? AOC. AOC. Yeah. I don't know. I, all these we letters, know what all, mean. The, all these letters. <laughs> Uh, yeah. A anyway, um, Alexandra, is she a progressive? Does he, she call herself a progressive? Yeah, very much so. Yes. Yeah. Because I, to begin with, I always called myself a leftist because number one, it pissed off the right wingers, and secondly, I called myself a leftist because I wasn't going to make any bones about it. You know, I was going to. I'm a progressive. Well, what's that? Well, that's kind of a nice leftist. Well, it no. pissed off the liberals too. Hmm? Oh, I pissed it off. It pissed off the liberals. Oh, too. I hate liberals. <laughs> I really hate liberals. My old friend Phil Oaks years ago said that a progress uh, that a liberal is somebody who's ten degrees to the left in good times and ten degrees to the right when it affects him personally. <laughs> you know, that sounds like a libertarian. Uh, well, that, yeah, that it, sounds like a libertarian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what libertarians are. I guess they're the political version of Unitarians. <laughs> no. You know. Although I bet libertarians, all libertarians, all the benefits of uh, Social Security and all that other stuff, but they don't want to pay the taxes for it. Exactly. They don't. They don't think that government has any role except for the military. We have. Yep. We have uh, Kevin here. Hello. And giving them money personally. Yeah. Hello, Kevin. Hey, Alex, how are you? How do you describe yourself politically? Independent. No, just independent, right? Yep. I was an independent, and I, I registered as an independent, was very proud of that. I am now an independent, right? And I went, what does that mean? That means I can only vote once a year instead yep. of twice. And I had no say-so in the primaries. Yep. So yeah. I figured I better go back to being a... Uh, 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 so I so I went back to being uh, a Democrat, right? So then I registered, and then I went over to the polling place, and they said, we don't have your name here. You'll have to do a provisional ballot, which is a ballot you fill out, and they look at it later and say, do we like you or don't we like you? Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So I voted, and then I found out they didn't accept my provisional ballot. So what the hell did I become a Democrat for? <laughs> Why? Why didn't they accept it? They didn't accept yeah. it. I don't know. They just wrote me a note and a letter and said your your provisional ballot wasn't accepted. Oh, we can do it. <clears throat> we can change. You can change here in California like you change your underwear. Oh, really? How do you do yep. it? How do you do it in California? You change. You just your go underwear. up there and say I want to change. Where do you? Go? I mean, at the polling place? Yeah, yeah. We'll change you right at the polling place. We'll change you right there at the desk. And then <clears throat> you can change right back the next the next election. What prevents people though from the opposite party of going in and trying to screw up your election? In other words, saying, "Oh, I'm suddenly I'm a Democrat now, and I want to vote for," and then they vote for somebody who's. Pro it's no some states have open primaries. You're just changing uh, your yeah. party. Yeah. You can still be a Democrat and vote Republican too, so it doesn't really matter. Well, how do you yeah, but some states have. It's open just primaries. with an independent. And in certain elections, you can cross vote as well. Mm -hmm. Well, how, how do you people feel about this? And I've argued, argued this for the longest time. I think we should do away with primaries. And the reason we should do away with primaries is the only function they serve is to pick a candidate for a party. And quite frankly, yeah. they should have, if they want to hold a primary, they should have to pay for it. Because I agree. it is simply, a, you know, the, the main election, hey, you know, the, the, the whole game should be, hey, go pick your your standard bearer, and you pick your standard bearer, and you pick your standard bearer, and whatever. You run against each other and have a good time, but where you're going to decide who's going to run is at the convention, right? Don't have us spend millions upon millions of dollars in these primaries that only serve a function of helping the parties. Yes, uh, Charlie. Well, I kind of disagree with that because if the party had to pay for the primary, they had to come up with the money from somewhere. 
Where are they going to get the money? From corporations. That, that's going to make them even more beholden to corporations and the super rich. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. I want them less. I don't want... Yeah, but, I want the public to be paying for the for the primaries, for the elections, for everything. Then they're beholden to the public. Yeah, well, I think that I, I disagree with you because I say that, you know, people are going to pay for elections either way. You know, I mean, whoever goes out and has enough money to get the right amount of publicity probably is going to get the nomination or whatever. So. I don't know. I just I just see the primaries as a useless uh, exercise. It costs us a lot of money. I mean, it costs a fortune to hold a primary. And by the way, prior to what 1935, maybe 1940, they didn't have primaries. Yes. You know. So, what it, what is it you're eating there, Charlene? Like a fruit ice pop. <laughs> a fruit fruit ice pop. Okay. Yeah. I'm having like a dessert treat for myself. Yeah, well, what Marjorie and I do every night is we have, we share a, a keto uh, caramel uh, ice cream stick thing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the reason we do it is number one, it has only two carbohydrates in it, okay? Two net carbs of carbohydrates. And secondly, it tastes fucking great. Mm. I mean, it is just. <laughs> really delicious i get it at costco so if you're ever at costco going and just buy a package of these keto i bet you go back and buy them every time you're there you know <laughs> but anyway um so uh, uh josh is there anything happening uh, news wise that you know because he's a big supreme court watcher and so on what do you, what do you think is going to happen with the supreme court this time there are a lot of big questions Oh, yeah, it's yeah, too hard to tell. There's a lot of big, a lot of big cases probably this year coming up. Going to be uh, probably one of the yeah, biggest ones in a long time. So, might uh, remake a few of our normal uh, ways we live or whatever. I mean, that's a uh, going to be a possibility. I mean, I, I don't, I don't think we're going to have a like a some kind of major radical shift or anything in four or five different areas, but do you think you know, we might see something? What do you think is going to happen with Roe? Oh, it's gone. You think? So? Oh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, it. It's really too hard to tell. I don't think that it's. I don't think it's. Again, I don't think it's nearly as as given as a. Um, you know, as people are going to be led to believe by the media who wants to sort of fuel that fire so they can talk about it for as long as possible. I mean, I just don't think it's as simple as that, you know? I mean, I really don't. I mean, if people disagree, I, you know, I can understand, but I but why just the, don't, you know, have it down like that for me. That's all. Uh, but uh, the yeah, Supreme but it, Court let the Texas... Yeah, Charlie band. has his hand up there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Well, they can't... They cannot in Roe v. Wade unless they repeal the 13th Amendment. The 13th Amendment says you cannot have involuntary servitude in the United States. And there's nothing more involuntary servitude than forcing a woman to have a baby that she does not want to have. Okay. That's the definition of involuntary servitude. Do you think it is? I don't know yes. that I agree with you on that. I mean, I'd like to believe that that makes sense. Wow, well, she's already said she doesn't want to do it. It can't be more involuntary than that. Well, I get it. Yeah, but are they fighting it on that? Or are they bringing up that? Okay, okay. how well, they well, fight well, it is in the Constitution. Let me Somebody argue, ought to let, fight it on let that. Let me argue with you uh, only to this extent. I'm mine. only being a devil's advocate here. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm all for abortion. Okay, I'm all for retroactive abortion, especially with a guy like Donald Trump is concerned. Um, but uh, uh, Greg Abbott. Uh, Greg Abbott. Oh boy, that'd be fun. Yeah. I'm sorry, but you've been recalled. No, not as governor, as a human being. Okay. He never was. Is it? Can somebody sue him for uh, attempted murder? I mean, for what he's doing. I mean, some of the things. Well, uh, all of them, but yeah, what was I was listening to some program today, and they were really talking about in Texas that a rapist can basically 
pick the mother of his child. Yeah. Wow. Because there's no no recourse for her other or, or for that woman other than to get out of the state or something. I'm sorry, Charlie, but I couldn't spend a penny in Texas. <laughs> I don't blame you. Not going to happen, you know. <laughs> but well, uh, you know, if you look at it that way, but your, yeah, your servitude, you know, that's an interesting argument. I was thinking like Title IX. They have no laws. Like I tried to get um, the state of Wyoming legislature to say, you want to. Um, you know, take away a female's right to make a choice on her body, then the least you could do is make sure you collect DNA mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. the fathers of these children yeah. are supporting them financially. No questions asked. And what Child I support is And I was basically told to get screwed. Yeah. I mean, just not, not even acknowledged. What I find strange is that nobody is bringing up the fact that this Texas law puts the enforcement into the hands of individuals and individual companies and, and instead of the state enforcing their own law. It can that be. is blatantly unconstitutional yeah. for a state to say, we're gonna yeah. make this law, but oh, we're not gonna enforce it. We're gonna let individual people enforce, enforce it by uh, offering bounties. Couldn't it be, that is blatantly it, unconstitutional. Yeah, but it, it, isn't it also, uh, aren't we opening the, uh, the, the doorway for companies to come along and say, oh, we're going to be the catch you getting an abortion organization, and we're going to make our entire living out of getting the $10,000 for turning people Oh, in. I imagine there are groups so, you know. <laughs> yes. doing that, yeah. 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 Well, why don't you even hear about this in the media, though? You know, they're, they're talking about you know, trying to stay the, the law and all that kind of stuff. Nobody is talking about part the of the reason is there's the enforcement thing is 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 blatantly yeah. unconstitutional. Part, part of the reason is they're too busy covering William Shatner's 11 minute ride for yeah. two or three hours you in know. the dick rocket. Yeah, on the dick rocket. Yeah. Jeez. You know. If I hear him mm -hmm. talk about it one more time, oh, you know, when I no. got up there, it was blue sky there and it was dark blue up sky. there. That's what space is, you asshole. <laughs> you know, I asked Joss a, a question. Yeah. Sure. What other court, what other cases do you um, think are important? I mean, that might affect just regular folks, you know, the ones that pay taxes and all that good shit. You know, there. <laughs> There were a few others. I mean, uh, there's a there's a gun control case that I think is up this term, and I can't remember the the name, um, you know, of the two the two sides. But uh, you know, I mean, it's it's going to be up, and uh, you know, it's challenging some laws we've had for a while. Uh, you know, some some precedent that we've had. And I mean, you know, that's something that a lot of people care about. I mean, even people mm -hmm. who don't own weapons are just as passionately interested in that situation as people who do own them. Um, you know, to go along with the the Texas case and uh, you know, on the on the abortion rights deal. Um, you know, there's you know, there's one other I was reading about the other day, and I'm, now I can't remember what it was. You know, that that had some. Uh, I think it had something to do with labor and uh, you know unionizing again. You know, we, we we get one of those every five or six years that has the the um, you know the ability to maybe change you know some of that up. And you know, a lot of people obviously care about that quite a bit. You know, so but I I don't you know, and I at least heard someone this morning um, on MSNBC on Morning Joe. I was, run a little bit late this morning and I listened to a little bit of that. I think it was this Barbara McQuaid or someone that they have on there in the morning it used to be a U.S. attorney. And she kind of said what I said, which was, you know, look, the, the Texas case is, you know, obviously going to be huge. It's going to be super important. But she was just urging people, you know, to understand that in her time as a U.S. attorney mm -hmm. and as someone who, you know, had uh, spent a lot of time with the Supreme Court, you know, she felt like whatever comes out of this was at least going to be a fair shake that it wasn't right that a lot of people were just sitting around and they were just saying oh well this 
this justice, this one, this one, this one were reported, you know, um, appointed by a Republican and these four here were, oh, so it's over, it's done, you know, I mean, I mean, we should have a, a little bit more faith and a little bit more belief in our in our do, system. Do we, and, do we currently have a wild card on the Supreme Court right now? <laughs> Somebody that you can't count on going right wing every time, Roberts. Think Roberts. Roberts. Yeah. Right. You know. I mean, there's so, been one of cases. I mean, you know, that's obviously true, and I mean, I guess that's what I've said before. Was, I mean, what would be the number of times that the Chief Justice would surprise people from their preconceived notions before they would say? Oh, I'm going to stop labeling him that way. Maybe he is legally open-minded. Would it be three times, five times, ten times? Mm -hmm. If he does it the 20th time, will you then say, oh, well, Mm. gee, I guess I can consider him open-minded now. I I don't know. To me, he's done it enough times a long time ago that I consider him open-minded. Now, if he does something tomorrow that I don't agree with, I would just say I didn't agree with him. I mean... Big whoopee, but I, I wouldn't, you know, I'm not going to burn him an effigy over it. I mean, he said something that I didn't like, or he decided something in a way that I said, well, I don't think I view it that way. I think that's counter to what I've read in the notes of the convention or whatever, you know, and I mean, so well, I think he's open. I mean, you can't the, count on him in this abortion case one way or the other. Well, I think like, he's an open minded yeah. person. Roe, Roe is. How many years old? About 40 years old? Oh, Something like that. Yeah. How many years? 1973. Yeah, uh, 48 years. Don't uh, judges on the Supreme Court occasionally give great weight to precedent, to how long this thing has been a law already, and that it, they don't just vicariously say, well, I don't believe in abortion, therefore I'm getting rid of this, because it was something that's been law for the last almost 50 years. Sure, they always do. I mean, well, I shouldn't say always. I mean, but a, a lot of them do. I mean, and I think they do in most all cases. You know, and the thing about you know the the Roe situation is, I don't remember how long after it was somewhere around uh, 18, 20, 21 years. You know, you had the second large case that came up, which was the the Casey case, mm-hmm. and you know that was a case that was the first and really only real test of overturning it that has come before the court since the Roe decision. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it was decided in a way that upheld Roe again. So you've had two major cases now that both, you know, kept abortion rights alive in this country, you know, as our, as our precedent so that's what I'm saying is an overturning of that would be a a bit of a radical shift, okay? And I just, you know, I don't, I'm just saying that I don't think some radical shift is as given as some people would make it out to be, especially when a lot of the people that are telling you this have some sort of vested interest in getting you to believe that, such as raising money from you, or getting you to join their organization, or watch their channel, mm-hmm. or you know, vote a certain way, or whatever. Some of the things they say are true, or legitimate, or I would agree with them, mm-hmm. but I think that they certainly exaggerate, or blow it out of proportion, and something, you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm not, I'm not all tied up in knots about it. I mean, and it's not just because I'm a man or whatever. I mean, I'm just saying would I would honestly feel the same way if it were some sort of case that might involve my own personal well-being or health choices. I mean, I, w- I would be concerned. And when it was over, I might even be angry, but I wouldn't be as stressed out as some people are. That's all I'm Charlie's saying. got his hand up. Charlie? I have two daughters, and uh, all I know is that Texas has a rate of maternal mortality in childbirth that's double the national average. And they're going to force women to complete pregnancies that they don't want to complete, even though they don't want to take care of the women. They give them no prenatal <coughs> benefits. They, they do nothing to protect the women. 
And to me, that makes me mad. I don't want my daughters growing up in that situation. Well, you know, I mean, here's the thing. I think that if the Supreme Court were to do anything about Roe, in the, it, it, because of the way the, you know, they're weighted, I think they would say it's up to the states. I think then you well, would find that's it. that's what that's what, what it that, would do. Yeah. That's what an overturning of that ruling, yeah. you know, would equate to. So, so you die you know, there would be a lot of in California. Yeah, right. there, there would be a lot of stuff that you know would come from the states after that. I mean, so so, so what I'm just saying, because no, wait, something wait, wait, has wait, been wait, legal precedent. What, what I'm asking here is, if California say say the Supreme Court says no, it's up to the states. Let the states decide. And the, so the, so California says. Okay, or they say Roe versus Wade, you can't have abortions. Abortions aren't aren't legal. Could a state still do it anyway? I think that it'd be fair. That's the way it was before Roe v. Wade. Yes, that's 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 what it will basically return to. Yeah, but I mean, become, if California suddenly said, "But we're going to allow abortions in our state," doesn't did. states' rights have precedence over? They do. Well, no, we didn't have abortion in California when I was a kid growing up. I know because I had a pregnant girlfriend. You know, and uh, uh, right. You know, the only thing didn't we could New do. York, for, hmm? what? Didn't New York though? Hmm. Didn't New York? Didn't New York? I don't think any abortions? state allowed abortion. Some states did. Yes. R really? That's I why the rich women went to the states that gave abortion. Well, the no, no. I think a lot of yeah. Rich I mean, you'll a lot you'll of, you'll basically see. You would see in many ways a return to state control of that sort of an issue i mean it would equate uh, not i shouldn't say equate because that's a bad word for what i'm about to say with abortion but it would be along the same legal terms as the state of ohio saying you can get your driver's license at 16 but indiana saying no you can't get it till you're 17. right yeah, but you don't you know, die or, license. well correct i like i said i'm not saying equate i'm saying legally you would see those type of you know differences i mean there are certain things you can do in the state that I live in. You go to the next state, mm. and you can't. You know, and you know. I mean, it just would it, it would devolve into into something like that. I mean, but it, it's still going to take a radical shift, which I still think is mm. just. I'm skeptical, skeptical of that. I mean, ra I mean, sometimes the radical shifts are necessary, and we, we would like some of them. I mean, just because something has been law for a long time and the court has previously agreed with it obviously yes does not mean it will remain that way i mean separate but equal was the law of the land for a very long time and the court looked at it many times and said no we're yeah. good with that no we're good with that so and that then eventually there was a court that said uh nope sorry yeah but we're not it, good with it, that it, it, and all let, the people let, that came before okay, us made but, a mistake but let me ask you this is it the reason why separate but equal got thrown aside and, and a newer, more modern law came into being was because times had changed and the times dictate yes. many times what the law is that comes out of the Supreme Court? Well, right. I mean, the... I mean, it, but know, is, is that, you know, is that fair? You know, I've often said if, if, uh, if uh, let's say, you know, it used to be that if you smoked pot and they arrested you, you went to jail for 20 years. Well, right. what do you tell all those people? Well, Wyoming, you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what, but what do you tell all those people who went to jail for 20 years for pot? They can go down to the local store and buy it now in New York City. California, too. You know, and does anybody get their, does anybody get some money for having spent that time in jail? Because now it's, oh, one day it's legal, oh. the next day it isn't. I, I, I don't understand that. No, that they don't even let them out of jail. Is it not the the reason this all keeps coming up is because of a religious movement also? I mean, what about the religious, you know, the, the, the separation of religious and religion and state? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the reason this stuff keeps coming up is because religion starts making a movement and they all start talking about that stuff and then it all starts coming about but again. But isn't our entire society dictated <laughs> on on some religious tenets in this country? I mean... Correct. I, I mean, mean and then, then it fades away and everything's fine, and then all of a sudden people start bringing that crap up again. Yeah, and it, oh, you know, it always comes back to religion. And, correct. Uh, you know, and anything bad in this world usually has to do with religion. I mean, come on, what's going on in Afghanistan right now? It's all religious. Okay? Uh, you know, right. I mean, and then in those religion, 
you know, in those... Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute, hold on a second. Those it traction for a while, and then it gets knocked down in the courts, and it, you know, then the religion calms down again, and then somebody comes in, like our previous leader, mm-hmm. and starts talking that stuff again, and everybody because gets geared all, up again. As we all know, he's a very... And starts we all going, know. getting strong again, and then it'll fade away again. We all know Hopefully. what a religious guy Trump was. He yeah. was not religious. He was just stirring up the religious right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's the whole issue. I mean, mm-hmm. that's all it was. Is he he made it look that way, and he was up top, so he got them all stirred up. Yep. And well, look, those. That's oh, what. Go, I'm sorry. I thought I was done. Go ahead. Guys. No, that's, go ahead. I'm done. <laughs> I mean, you know that. Look, those organizations. You know, religious organizations, for example. Are, are certainly a driving force that and look they're they're very good at it i mean uh, you know i basically have a pretty good background in hardcore you know pentecostal uh upbringing and religion you know i went to some parochial schools um i was brought up catholic i, was- know, I mean i've been in look i've been in churches where you know, they run up and down the aisles and speak in tongues and all that kind of stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. several years ago, I was in a church for something, and you know, the pastor is up there talking about his daughter, who's a nurse in the in the um, maternity level, and you know, and they had just delivered a baby, and they were talking, and he's just up there saying, "What a shame that you know, if the mother had just changed her mind 15 minutes before, they could have just cut it out and threw it in the trash," which is garbage that's that's not the yeah, law in yeah. ohio yeah. that's not the yeah. law anywhere. <laughs> anywhere you know right. but but they can say that and and, and a lot of people mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. you know i mean i mean it's just it's there's so much just horse garbage what, that what, goes I mean, with it yeah. i mean it's just so <clears throat> fervent with some <clears throat> folks there have been some quiet they're people great at driving that there have been some quiet people here tonight let's try to bring them into the conversation mm-hmm. uh, alan what do you think About what? About what we've been talking about. Uh, California has has uh, you can get abortions here, and you can now buy marijuana. They're they're taking. People, and by the way, all of them at Safeway. So yeah, they're taking people. You said that that these people are in jail. California has just signed some legislature, the governor, that the people that are in jail, they're reversing their guilty charges for marijuana. And making them not guilty and letting, if they're still in jail, letting them out and getting rid of the charges off their record. Yeah. <coughs> How about you, uh, uh, Jeff? Any thoughts on what we're talking about? Well, as far as uh, pot stuff, uh, the laws in Connecticut have changed and also in Massachusetts because Massachusetts will, they sell it legally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right in Connecticut, you can have it, you can, but you can't buy it there. So well, here yes. in New York, you can have it now, but they haven't come up with the the method for selling it. In other words, they got to figure out how to license it and how to make money out of it. That's okay. what Massachusetts is doing a very good job. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're going to be sitting around here waiting. I mean, I'll be at death's door before it's ever actually being sold in stores here. I bet you. Of uh, uh, Terry and then Charlie. In Wyoming, they have drive-through liquor stores. You can literally go up to a drive-through window and have them make you a drink to go. Really? <laughs> but if you got po- caught with a joint, they could literally take your property, whether or not you were actually convicted. Now, mm-hmm. would they actually do that? I don't know. It depends how much money you have and whether or not they like you but that is the way that it is in wyoming really sure oh, yes and the police go yeah. oh well we don't want stoners driving <laughs> going, if you don't want people impaired driving shut the goddamn windows actually you know, there's, there's, there's an stores. argument and you I'll know go, that's just bullshit. there's an argument and then i'll go to charlie but, Excuse my language. but there was a there was a, a study in oregon back in the 50s i think and the, the, the study they did was to see how people, if people could drive under the influence of marijuana, whether they were better at it or worse at it or whatever. They, and what they did was they took people who had never smoked pot, and they took people who were experienced pot users, 
and they found people who were experienced pot users could drive perfectly well, whereas the people who had never smoked were having a little bit of trouble because they were getting used to it. What happens is marijuana is one of the few drugs that we know of that you can compensate almost 100% for if need be, okay? So if you say, hey, I got it's time to drive home now, I'm gonna straighten my head out. You can straighten that out enough to drive. Now, I'm not gonna tell people to do that because I don't want somebody to drive on pot, suddenly have an accident, kill his wife and family, and then sue me, okay? So I just, I'm just telling you what the Oregon study found out. So this whole uh, attitude about, oh, you know, when people are high on pot, I mean, that goes back to reefer madness, for Christ's sake, you know? Um, yes, uh, Charlie, you had your hand up earlier. Yeah, I was going to comment on what Alan said about the Californians just now. How, how long has pot been legal in California? But just at now, least, at least at least 10 years. years. Letting the people out of prison that got sent to prison for marijuana possession. Right. At least 10 years. Yeah. In the other states, Colorado, Washington, none of those states have, 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 have even considered letting the people out that are already, have been in prison for decades. At least you don't go to prison. Prison. At least you don't go to prison for an abortion here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so far. And you can't have your neighbor turn you in for getting one. That's right. Yeah. Jesus. Because there's a $10,000 reward. Oh, it's worse than that. Hmm. It's $10,000 per complainant. They don't tell no. you that. You can have 100,000 people complaining and each one of them gets 10 grand. Didn't they say a lot of people were calling in and, uh, and, and naming uh, your governor? Uh, yes, yeah. yeah, but yeah. Is that from the state they get the 10 grand or do they get to, to sue the person they think is helping or having the abortion or what have you it's and try to get the money out helping of or having the abortion? Here's okay. what's terrible. It's not the state that's. That's that. why Planned Parenthood has not had an abortion since that law passed because they couldn't afford all the court cases from all these idiots from all over the fucking country that would be suing them for ten grand. What is the story? What's the story? What's the story with uh, people uh, getting? Um, um, oh, no, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, 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 no, oh, Uber drivers getting yeah. busted for this. For taking people because to an abortion. Because they drive them to an abortion. Yeah, yeah but Uber, Uber yeah. and Lyft have both said that they would compensate, they would cover the cost of any of their drivers that get sued for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help. I don't understand how a female would even live in Texas. I don't or Mississippi. Well, we, 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 you, maybe, maybe we can have... Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, or, or be, uh, you know, but, but we have Jack Bishop here, and Jack Bishop, who just joined us, who does the show at... Uh, at midnight our time here uh he uh, uh he can answer that question for you why would a woman want to live in texas you know um uh, i'm gonna have to ask my wife about that because i don't really know <laughs> yeah i'm gonna have to ask my wife <clears throat> and, and and she's from oklahoma and she came and she moved down here mm -hmm. and uh i'm gonna ask her and i I think I'll also ask some of my granddaughters and see what they say, because uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this state has gone so far backwards in the last 10 years that I'm ready to get out of here. Wasn't it more, when, you and I, when you and I lived in Houston together, same yeah. time, we weren't Well, we didn't live together. We didn't live together. <laughs> Get that straight. Oh, they finally well, clarifying admitted. that, Jack. Uh, I mean, we were just friends. Is it a publicly known. Yeah. While it was extremely racist, I mean, we walked yeah. down the street with my wife, and she was in the middle. People stared at us, trying to figure out who she was with. <laughs> um, uh, and we loved driving them crazy that way. At least we didn't get shot for doing it. But the thing is that I don't remember whether it was leftist or right wing. I don't think it was. I thought I think it was very much a democratic state, wasn't it at the it time? Was. Even when I moved here, the majority of the elected officials were from the Democratic Party. But you see, you got to go back to Reagan for all of this nonsense that the Republican Party has become. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Roger There's a guy Bennett. named Richard Vigory who drove the fundraising for the Republican Party 
starting in the 80s. And I had the uh, dubious honor of interviewing him. And he said what they wanted, what they wanted a, uh, a uh, <clears throat> supportive base that would salivate on demand on what they said. They didn't, they didn't want people to think about what was going on. They just wanted uh, the folks to come in and vote for them the way they wanted yeah, them but getting, to vote. Getting back to those days, I seem to remember it as being a democratic state. Now, it my question was a would democratic be, state. the people who were Democrats then, if they had lived to t- today, would they suddenly be right-wingers instead of liberals? Well, I think... Um, because it's certainly not uh, a democratic state now. Well, well, here, here's what I always say. Democrats in Texas, when you and I lived here, and certainly when I came back here about four years later, were really Northeastern Republicans. They weren't West Coast Republicans. Okay, okay, yeah. They were Northeastern Republicans. As a matter of fact, look who came out of the Northeast, moved to Texas, and became president. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. As, as, Texas went 109 years with Democratic governors. 109 straight years. And by the way, some of the most corrupt Democrats. By the way, in all deference to the fact that they were Democrats, they were some of the most corrupt governors in the history yeah. of the United States. Uh, you, you never saw corrupt governors until you went to Tennessee and Louisiana. Well, I don't, I don't think they they were any more corrupt than Ma Ferguson. Well, it, well, it it's, it depends on what you mean by corruption. You know? I mean, the reason uh, why I, I'll tell you the reason why the governor of the state of Texas right now doesn't have the power to uh, commute death sentences, okay, is because of Ma Ferguson. She was so corrupt that she would take people who they, she knew who just committed murder right there and then and, and pardon them. And so finally, one day they said, now that Ferguson's out of here, we're not going to have this kind of crap going on well, anymore. So the governor, the governor in the state of Texas up until recently really didn't have a hell of a lot of power. He still doesn't. Yeah. The, the lieutenant governor in this state is the guy with the power over no. legislation. Now, when I left here in 67, going to Tennessee, I saw corruption like I had not dreamed of till I married my first wife and she told me about the corruption in Louisiana. Hmm. And when I got to Tennessee, what was going on, they had a governor who was uh, eventually sent to jail, I believe, for selling pardons. You got enough money, give it to the governor and he and you'll get a pardon. Yep. Yep. So anyway, that, uh, you know, uh, 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 welcome, welcome to the new Texas. <laughs> you know, um, it, well, it, well, what got my attention, just, I'm going to get off of here in just a second. Mm-hmm. I want to say something about marijuana, besides the fact that it's still pretty damn good in some places. Uh, marijuana is the only known substance that will make college kids drive slow. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you something uh, uh, about pot today, okay? Call me old-fashioned. I don't know. I love the sociability of rolling a joint and then passing it down the line to all your friends back and forth, right? Okay? That sociability is gone. What you've got now is passing a vape pipe back and forth. Yep. And, uh, and it's something that doesn't smell or taste like pot. You know, anybody agree or disagree with me on that? How about, uh, Charlie, are you a, a doer? I have never smoked a vape pipe, so I have no idea what that's like. Yeah, well, what I'm saying is, is that these people, like Albert comes up from Florida. They got the stores down there, right? He brought up the little gummies, and he brought up the, the capsules and a vape pipe for us, which I can't use it because it's just so harsh. Even a little bit just rips my throat apart. I'd just rather be able to roll a joint and smoke it. That was a, what a sociable thing that was. Yeah. You know? The purpose of marijuana was to get together with your friends, smoke a little, get loaded, and sit around and talk about shit that nobody understood. 
you know, I and remember. I, I, I remember. I remember the day that uh, uh, I was sitting in my apartment. I always talk about this, uh, sitting on the floor, passing a joint back and forth with my then good friend P.J. O'Rourke, who was working over at the National Lampoon at the time. Mm. And as we're passing it back and forth, he says to me, he says, "You know, someday, when we're slightly older, this is going to be legal." <laughs> I thought he meant like 10 years from then. It's yeah. like 40 years since we had that conversation. You know, it took us this long to realize that this is the most one of the most benign drugs ever created. Well, here's the reason yeah. why it took so long. It's not the, uh, the fact that it's benign. It's the fact that for so many people, people like people like me, for instance, I'm not the most sociable person when I get stoned. Oh, I get. I, I, I turn. I want to go in the corner and get yeah. small. It's like a spigot. I turn. Some, I just uh, go into a little shell or whatever. Uh, and I think Ver, Ver, Vernon is this a, is this a topic that you are knowledgeable of? Although I don't. Oh. I I didn't think so. A guy in those. I only I only had I only had marijuana once, and that was when I was a teenager. And I went went somewhere with my cousin, and he knew some kids that had some, and and we'd been drinking beer all night, and I was kind of sick at my stomach, you know, from drinking all the beer. And I took three or four drags off that marijuana cigarette, man, and I felt a whole lot better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, the only thing that's I the use, only time I ever experienced the only thing it. I use pot for is to go to sleep. If I if I can't go to sleep, I'll take a hit off of this vape, or I have two different vapes, uh, uh, or Marjorie will have a, a rolled joint and i will take a, a suck on that and that kind of puts me to sleep you know that that's what pot does to me it makes me drowsy you know so probably yes. most people I used to get stoned in san francisco at certain musicians apartments and houses and i just wanted to lay on the floor and remember to breathe and chew the carpet yeah yeah well you know um, but uh, so so uh, in other words, in Wyoming, if I were to smoke a joint and the cops stopped me, I could get a whole bunch of time in jail, right? Um, yeah, or they could literally take your property. I guess if literally you were, take um, your property. That's the part that really just yeah. rankles well, my anger. You for, you've forgotten what it was like in Texas when you and I were both living. Oh here. yeah. You know, I knew when I came back here there was a guy that was an editor of a of a music magazine and he got caught with a, a, a relatively small amount of dope and he got a life sentence wow. of which he served 15 years i've got to tell you a funny story the first time i ever smoked pot i was in houston texas wait a minute that was the first time you ever smoked pot yep don't lie to me now bro no no uh, and and Ronnie had a hairdresser, and this guy had pot. So she said, "You've never tried it?" Because she was a little more advanced than I was. And I said, "No." And she said, "Well, let me get some from him." And I said, "You know, the funny thing I've heard about this marijuana is, you know, you smoke it, and the next thing you know, you're going to want to try heroin." <laughs> and she said, "Don't." She said, "Don't be ridiculous." So we go over to this guy's place, and he sells us a little bit of it. And she starts, um, we start smoking it on the way home. And halfway home, I had to have her take over driving because I, I, was, I just was incapable of driving. And I said, this is really good stuff. I enjoy this. This is terrific. And I don't feel like I want to go out and have heroin or anything like that. So I go back to this guy to get more. And he says, okay. And he says, it'll be that much. And I pay him. And he hands me the little baggie of I think he used to get an ounce of pot in those days for 15 bucks, right? Yeah, and something he says, like that. By the way, if you want it, I've got heroin. <laughs> and I went, maybe it's true, and I got the hell out of there. You know. Well, the first time I smoked a joint, mm -hmm. I was uh, 18 years old. I was doing the all night thing at a radio station in the Bay Area. Mm hmm. And the guy on before me was some young kid named Sly Stone. Mm -hmm. If you tell, the, refer to Sly Stone one more time, Jack. 
But he was I mean, responsible other, for me for I, introducing me still, to Mar- I, I think Mar- I think Sly Stone's the only famous person he's ever known. Okay. <laughs> no, unfortunately, I knew James Brown too, and that's a completely uh, well, that, different that was, yeah. that I never uh, 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 let Alan. Yeah. Oh, I I have smoked marijuana and I have drank alcohol. You know, I've sold heroin. I've sold you know cocaine and methamphetamine. You know, but I never tried them. What do you mean you sold them as a cop? Or a cop. Yeah, as a cop. So it was an under it was sting operation. Yeah, but so. I never, you know, because I'd smoked marijuana, I had the drugs in my possession. I never wanted to take them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I sold them as a cop. I never sold them illegally. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I know it was bullshit in college. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're a cop and you're selling drugs, but you say that wasn't illegal for you to do that? It, not in California. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. It's illegal to sell certain drugs in California. If you sell yes. cocaine, but not they for cocaine a still illegal. Yeah. Not for Limited a cop. immunity. But not, not for, for a, a cop. He was, were you undercover? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, but well, that's why I was legal. Well, then, then, right. was then you're a that's fucking right. slime bag because what you were doing was entrapping people. Well, no. So entrapment is real simple. You got to prove whose mind it was in. If, if I have, say, I have drugs for sale. And Alex Bennett walks down the street and I said, hey, would you like some of this? And you go, wow, what is it? And you say, oh, it's heroin. Yeah, sure, I'll try it. That's entrapment. If some drug dealer approaches you and, and or druggy and says, hey, you got any drugs for sale? That's not entrapment. It was in his mind first, not the cop's mind. That's so what did you do? Mind. Go around with amphetamines just in case somebody wanted to buy some? <laughs> Well, we would go out and target neighborhoods. Did you or, ever feel uh, guilty? People, Did you ever feel guilty about busting yeah. people for drugs? Because, quite frankly, I think every one of them should be legalized or medically approved. Okay, medically uh, approved. Some you of know, them. Yeah. But I mean, I just think busting people for for doing something like that is just—it's terrible. Well, the war on drugs has not worked in this country, so we got to find a different route. Maybe, well, like you say, make them legal. What would what, you say? All we've got to do is what they did in Portugal. Hold on a second. What, what, did you, what were you saying, uh, uh, Terry? I was agreeing, I think, with Jack, whoever said it. I think they legalized all drugs in Portugal. Oh, okay. I think they yeah. did in Spain, too. Uh, I know they, I legalized, yeah, somewhere. they legalized pot yeah. years ago. Yeah. You know, because I was in Ibiza back in what the 70s maybe this maybe the 80s and i i went to this restaurant and the person i knew there uh said uh you want to get high i said sure so he brought a joint out to the table of his restaurant and gave it to me and said here enjoy yourself well you know. the only thing i regret about smoking marijuana is my dad didn't live long enough for me and him to smoke it together because i found out my old man had been ahead back in the 30s well, I had a friend who, who went home to his father, and he said, Dad, I'd like you to do something with me. Why don't you try a joint with me? And his father said, okay. And he said, here's how you do it. And he showed him how to do it. And then you, you puff it on it, and you hold it in. And then and so his father does it, and he does it. And they were sitting there both in, in two, like, big chairs. And finally, he looks over at his father, and he says, well, Dad, what do you think? He said, it hasn't changed since I was a kid. <laughs> well, it's kind of like what happened with me and my oldest grandson. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. His folks got bent out of shape because the kid got caught with a little marijuana on him. And he was, and he was like 19. Mm-hmm. And so he calls me up on the phone and says, hey, you know, and I said, Mitch, let me tell you, when your dad was your age, he was smoking marijuana. When I was your age, I was smoking marijuana. When my father, your grandfather was our age, he was smoking marijuana and great grandpa grew marijuana on the farm. And I got a little touch of glaucoma. So the next time you come down here to Texas, you bring some marijuana and we'll get stoned together. Okay. Anyway, hey, listen, you got to go because I you got to go do a show. show. Yeah. And, see you in a t- see you in about five minutes. Yeah, and I got a bunch of people I have to say goodbye to. So, uh, 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 
let me see here. I guess, uh, does anybody have anything to say? Charlene, you've been very quiet tonight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to stay out of trouble. <laughs> stay out of trouble? Well, you've been, you've been just fine. And I, okay. uh, I, I always love seeing Vernon mm-hmm. on the show because he's got such a lovely background there. That's out of a hotel room, is it? Or is it a lodge? Or what are you, renting a house? No, it's a condo. It's a condo. And uh, yeah. the, the, nice aided wallpaper. What is it? No, 1970s. Yes, it, it, this was built wallpaper. in the 70s. Mm-hmm. Oh, is it? Oh, it well. still looks okay to me. No, but, it's it's you know. not hideous wallpaper. Here, the, there's, that, a, there's we, a stone fireplace over there, oh, too. Wow. wow. For that, we have to make pizzas. For that, we have to go to uh, for just bad wallpaper. We've got to go to uh, what's his name? Uh, Tony. 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 Yeah, that, that's the most hideous wallpaper of all time. Uh, in fact, well, it's a little too late for you to put it in your background there, uh, Alan. But there you there go. You go. That's the hideous wallpaper. <laughs> just for you. That is just super hideous. It, actually, it's better looking in the picture. Whoever took the picture, yeah. and they, it looks like it, yes. it's horrible in Tony's house. Well, Tony, Tony doesn't turn the lights on that much anymore, so you don't see it like that because that was taken. I think it was one night when he was on, and then he moved out of the picture for a couple of minutes. Somebody took that, and then Ray they, Rinaldi. He, Ray yeah. Rinaldi did it. Yeah, is that where it started? And, and then Phil got it from him. And yeah, and one night it. we all had the same the background. Was, yeah. 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 Anyway, uh, hey, good having you here again, Terry. Uh, you know, I mean, you're terrific. You're just terrific. You know, and plus, you know, we like to bring some sanity to your life there in, uh, in uh, that state, right? Yeah, it, it's tough living. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of tough in Texas, too, but at least these yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not quite as bad as Texas yeah. Uh, thank you so much. So thank you, Terry. I really appreciate it. Please keep calling. We love having you here. And uh, okay. same thing with you, Charlie. Nice that you weren't able to play baseball the last couple of times. Uh, Hurricane Pamela. Ha- Hurricane Pamela. Uh, Josh, water to California. Josh, always great to hear your musings on the Supreme Court. Uh, and uh, Vernon, thank you. Thank you, Charlene. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Jeff. And thanks, of course, to uh, our old friend, uh, Kevin, as well, uh, for being here tonight. Uh, That's it. Okay. I'll see you all later. Why don't you all kind of wave goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye at you. Okay. There they go, folks. There they go. They're they're leaving us slowly but surely. And uh, let me just uh, end them here, because when I end them, I then get into sync. See, once they go away, all of a sudden I'm back in sync. I'm slowly getting back in the sync. Come on, just a little bit more. There we go. See, now I'm in sync for the most part. Anyway, hey, listen, uh, we'll see you again. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to try for Wednesday, I think, instead of Tuesday. Uh, just because I'm still trying to get over what I've had. And uh, also, I want to see people start listening again and calling again. And I would also do a show on Monday, too, uh, which is the show we will do at 4 o'clock Monday afternoon. So join us for that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, stay right where you are. Uh, Jack Bishop's going to be here with The Intersection. I'll be here again, as I say, uh, on Monday at 4 o'clock on GabNet. In the meantime, as always... If you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, if you got a mask, wear it. And if you're not going to wear a mask, you better get that needle in your arm. And I ain't talking heroin. Good night, everybody. Mm-hmm.